people can get very depressed about it. I would say if you're grieving to make sure you have a support network somehow, a friend or two friends mm -hmm. or other family members or whatever it might be, find a support group through something like a hospice or social service agency or through your church. Mm -hmm. People that are going through grief share with one another so that you know you're not alone in that experience. Right. And just give yourself time. You can read books about what you're going through. The, there's common threads in grief, common things that people experience. No matter what kind of grief it is, we all, they all have certain characteristics that we're all going to undergo. Yeah. And reading about them, hearing other people talk about them will let us know that we're not crazy. You know, and that it's normal what we're experiencing. Does writing help? Sometimes writing a People goodbye love, letter or letter of regrets and thank you. Those things are helpful. Things like you know, it goes along that same line as journaling, doing a daily oh, journal okay. and a, something like that. All, whatever, whatever it might be that a person gravitates to, that's what they should do. The thing not to do is to drink do drugs, mm -hmm. to run away from your grief. Alter your consciousness. To alter your consciousness. The thing to do is to turn and face it, be with it, not dwell on it, but if the waves of grief Experience come it. over you, just sit back, sit quietly, and just watch it happening in your life, you mm -hmm. know? But don't turn away from it. Don't run away from it because it'll come up in other ways further down the line. You know, yeah. either physical symptoms or in your relationships. People, the thing to do is to let it out. People don't want to experience it. They want to avoid the painful feelings. But it's my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, that, that experiencing it is the way to process through it and to finally come out the other end of it. It is. And people yeah. want to avoid people that are grieving. Yeah. But to grieve and to go through it can also have an effect, as we were talking earlier, about on our own fear of death. You know, we can see all this process of life, of death, of grief, as a normal thing. It's, it's what it means to be human in this body, and we all have to go through it. And if reincarnation is to be believed, we've all gone through it thousands of times. We don't remember it, but we have. McNair, let's talk about the future. Let's talk about the future. How do you see, do you, do you see our view of death changing in the future? Our fear uh, of death going uh, away definitely. more? It's, people wouldn't believe what's going to happen over the next 50 to 100 years and how our whole view of death and dying is going to change. In the world right now are a great group, if you will, of spiritual teachers called the Masters of Wisdom. These are spiritual teachers who are coming into our world for the first time to live openly since time immemorial, if you mm. will. And at their head is one who's called Maitreya, the world teacher. And this group of teachers, spiritual teachers, will be living with humanity once they come out into the public arena. They will be living among humanity, teaching, guiding, and showing us how to manifest who we are as spiritual beings, teaching us who we are in the first place and showing us how to demonstrate that in our daily lives. And one of the things they will be showing us is that death is not real. Death is only an illusion that happens to this body, but when you know who you are and when you experience who you are, you know that death is only a doorway through which you're walking. And this will be demonstrated for us. And it will take away from humanity that age-old fear of death that we've had for so long. And that it will free us up to live life more abundantly. My first thought is, will I live long enough to see, to hear this teaching and to, to feel this sense of relief? Well, um, where are these teachers and when do they start teaching? Unless you're going out tonight, I think you probably will be. You look pretty <laughs> strong and healthy and youthful. Um, it's going to happen very soon. Um, we're told by British author Benjamin Krim, who's the chief exponent of this story and has been for 20 years, that soon to emerge into the public arena will be the world teacher Maitreya and his group, the Masters. Prior to their coming out before the world, there will be certain changes in the world, one of which will be a major economic collapse, if you will, change, mm. so that the priorities of the world change. And instead of doing the things that we're doing now, spending all our money on armaments and guns and whatever it might be um, now, that our priorities will change. But for those priorities to change so that we're building houses for people and feeding people and giving people health care and education and clothing, so that those become our concerns, the whole economic system has to change. Yeah, because money is God right now. Money is our God, exactly. Right. 
And there's nothing wrong with money in and of itself, but it's the use of it. Money can be a great spiritual tool, it actually. It can accomplish great things. Yes. But our whole focus on the material way of living has it. to change. Right. And an economic collapse is seen by the masters, by this group of spiritual teachers, mm -hmm. as really the only way to get us over that step so that we start to live life differently. So they're here now. They're here now. The economic collapse will happen. And then the world teacher will be invited to speak to the whole world through the link television and radios by of the, the media? world. By the media. There will be such a call from humanity that we need help okay. that he will be invited to come forward. He's living in the world now and has been for um, since 1977. Ready to help humanity, ready to come forward at any moment, um, but hasn't because we haven't been ready for him. But very soon we're going to be ready because this change in our economy and our political system. So he's waiting for the change. timing to be right to have the greatest impact is what exactly. it sounds like. Exactly. So he's going to come forward and what, speak to everybody? He will speak on that day which will come to be known as the Day of Declaration. Mm -hmm. He will appear on television. People that have been you know, alerted to this fact will turn on their TV and they'll see him on television. He, and he will, he will appear on television for 20 or 30 minutes. But the, the interesting thing about it is he won't speak, but yet we'll still hear him talking in our own minds um, telepathically so that his words will be dropping silently into our minds. It'll be like he's having a conversation with us. Mm -hmm. You'll hear him in English. I'll hear him in English. Um, people in Holland will hear him in Dutch and France will hear him in French and so on around the world okay. in their own language. He will be telling us at that time who he is, why he's here, who we are, and that what our purpose is and what's going to happen with his presence in the world and the presence in the world of the Masters. On that day, also at that time, his love will flow out through all, over all the earth through the hearts of all humanity. It will be as if he is embracing us in his arms, his love. On the day of Pentecost in the Bible, right. people were felt that tremendous uplift of God's love and yes. spoken tongues. Well, this will be a reenactment only on a world scale of the happenings of Pentecost. And the third thing will hap that will happen on that day, in addition to the us hearing his voice and his love flowing through our hearts, mm -hmm. is there will be hundreds of thousands of simultaneous physical healings of people who are ill, as if so that those together those three things will convince humanity that, hey, this is a pretty special fellow. We better listen to what he's saying. He's here to help. Let's, let's let him talk some more yeah. so we can move on yeah. and have a better world. I like the idea of the love in the heart. I like that a lot, that we will feel the love of God in our heart because people are worried about the Antichrist and the Antichrist can't do that. No. So that would tell me that this is the real, the real teacher. Well, the love is already in a stick. The love is already there. It's like he's opening the door okay. and letting it out. So I mean, his love connects with the love which is already within us. I would think that, th that after that, our view of death would change significantly. You when, know? It will. Yeah. When we know who we are, we don't, there's no reason to fear because we know that we're immortal and that life goes on. Thank you, Reverend McNair Ezard. Thank enjoyed you it. so much for being with me. Thank you. Really enjoyed this conversation and your experience uh, lends a lot of wonderful information to the folks. Mm -hmm. And I hope that you too have enjoyed this visit. My name is Dick Larson. God bless.